What's going on YouTube? And welcome to my first installment of a new segment. Uh, I rank my favorite drummers from Frank Zappa. So I'm gonna pick five. Uh, I first heard of Frank when I was a kid taking drum lessons. My drum teacher was a, a bit of a fan from the early 70s stuff. So I heard of it and then I got into it a little bit, you know, at like 14, I picked up Mothers of Prevention and then like 16, 17, I picked up Zoodle Lures, Joe's Garage, Live in New York, all those ones. And I kind of had my eyes open to how awesome these drummers were. So I'm going to list off my five favorite Zappa drummers. Now I think there is maybe eight or nine main ones. So I'll pick my top five. At number five, I have Chad Wackerman. Chad started, I think, in 81 and went until the 88 band. Uh, he was very young when he started. I believe he was like 19 or 20. Uh, really good, precise drummer. To me, he is a little stiff. Just how I hear him playing. He's a little bit stiff, but he doesn't really make mistakes. But he's not really... Doesn't have the same flair as the rest of them. So I'm going to put links to Spotify. I, I, I found all the links to all these uh, obscure sort of CDs and recordings. And I've got two or three songs I'm going to recommend. Is first one's the Black Page number two. And the second one's Mojio. It's from both from the, a concert. I think it was in, in, uh, in Italy, I think in 81 or 82. And it's from the You Can't Do That On Stage Anymore, volume five. So that's Chad Wackerman is number five. Number four, I have Ralph Humphrey. Ralph Humphrey was in the band for maybe a couple of years. Um, I think he did a little bit of duo drumming with uh, Chester Thompson. He's a very good... Uh, I, I really like the drum tone and the drum sound that he had. I like his drumming. It's not super flashy, but it's, it's pretty tasty, really. He played for the song, but he also was quite... Uh, he also had some good technique and, and some really good hands. Uh, the two tracks that I have from him are, they're easy to find. You can find these on YouTube. It's um, uh, St. Alfonso's Pancake Breakfast and Father Oblivion, both from the Apostrophe album. So that's number four. That's Ralph Humphrey. Number three is Chesta Thompson. Uh, Chester might be better known for his drumming with uh, Genesis. Really, really, really good drummer. I really loved his drum tone, his drum sound. I think he used sonar. And whatever it is, is he was using it. It sounds good, really good in some of those, uh, the Roxy recording. Um, the recommended, uh, the recommended uh, listening I have is from the You Can't Do That On Stage Anymore Volume 2. And this is from a Helsinki concert in Finland in 74. The two tracks are Approximate and Inca Roads. So give those a listen if you've not checked those out. Really, really, really good drummer. Uh, some other stuff that he's done that I like is from a band called The Fire Merchants. And he has a live recording with them. And it's some pretty, pretty intricate stuff if you like the, 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 the more Zappa-esque type of drawing. So Chester Thompson, number two. Number three, Jesus, screw that up. <laughs> number two. Mr. Terry Ted Bozio. Frank called him Terry Ted Bozio in one of the when he's at the end of the shows or he's introducing him, so that's why I say it. Um, first, I remember seeing Terry in my okay when my drum teacher was unable to make a lesson. He would come to my house. I wouldn't. I wouldn't go to a place if he couldn't make it. He, the next time he'd come and say, "Hey, sorry, I couldn't make it. Here's a video cassette of an instructional video." So I saw quite a few cool ones. Carmine, Apice, a few of those. Rod Morgenstein, uh, Tommy Aldridge. And then one time he got me the Terry Bozio one. And he had this huge, huge funky hair. He was playing really cool uh, a Remo kit of all. Like, nobody plays Remo. These black heads. He had these chinas with up really high with like little splashes on the insides of them. High, mini hi-hat right sort of beside his snare. And he's playing these weird ostinato patterns. I'm just like, okay, this guy's really good and fast, but it's kind of, is beyond me, right? 
So when I heard heard the Black Pale, I even like some of the some of the stuff from the regular songs. He's got some great drumming on there, but uh, uh, the, the live in New York with Punky's Whips and the Black Page and the Black Page Two, pretty pretty phenomenal. So Terry Bozio at number two, I've got the Purple Lagoon, which is just a killer track for all the musicians to kind of solo out there. The horns and then the guitar, obviously the bass, Patrick O'Hearn, and then Terry does some some crazy shit on the on the drums. It's a very good recording. So that's you can get that on the Leather, Lather, or Live in New York. I think this it might be the same recordings. There might be some alternate recordings, but uh, give that a listen. If you've not heard the Black Page Number Two, you got to check it out. And last but not least, Number One, I've got Vince Caliuta. Uh, I don't remember, I think really with Vinny, I think my first recordings, I think that was, I think I had night, I picked up an album, night Walker, night something with, uh, from, uh, Gino Vanelli, night stalker. Every time I watch myself, uh, typing stuff in the, in the thing here. Gino, that's <laughs> not that Gino Vanelli. Uh, oh, see, rock singer Gino. Two ends, that's what I screwed up. Okay. What's the album he's got here? Yeah, it's Nightwalker, 81. So, uh, call you to play it on that. I was doing this thing where I had a modern drummer magazine, and it was talking about his most, uh, his recommended listening. And so I was going out and picking up all the stuff. So that was one of the first ones. But then obviously Joe's Garage, it's just phen phenomenal phenomenal performance on there it's like like i can't even can't even like if you're not a drummer you don't really understand how good he was is playing over the bar odd time signatures he just makes it sound so smooth and there's not really many other drummers out there that can do what he he can do um three recordings i really like from him again the links will all be down in the description i've got uh, this is uh, from the Buffalo CD, which is a double CD, came out in 2007. He does Keep It Greasy, but it's like at double speed. Check out Arthur Barrow's bass. Oh, it is just so fast. I've got 13, which is a song that's in 13. Uh, that's from the You Can't Do That On Stage Anymore, Volume 6. And Pound For Brown, which is a sort of an instrumental sort of soloing thing cool tommy mars keyboard solo as well this is from you can't do that on stage anymore volume four um yeah shout out also to uh ruth underwood and ed mann the percussionist because those guys not only had to hit the notes but they also had they hit sorry had to hit the, the the hit on time but they also had to hit different notes whereas like a lot of times with the black page he's just a kick in the snare and these guys are going even with approximate is the purple lagoon there's a lot of crazy 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 stuff the intro uh yes saint alfonso's saint alfonso's pancake breakfast that uh the xylophone or vibes intro is just phenomenal so shout out to those percussionists. If you play with Zappi, you had to be great. Um, I liked Ainsley Dunbar. He, he was probably the coolest of, of his drummers. Uh, Dave Log, Logeman, Logeman. That's one drummer that nobody ever talks about. The lost, the lost Zappa drummer. And I guess Jimmy Carl Black. And maybe there's one other one that was in there a little bit. But those are the main, main guys. Yeah, that's it. So those are my five favorite Zappa drummers let me know what you think uh, and next time I think I'll do my five favorite Zappa lineups so check it out when I post that so all right thanks for watching and I will catch you in the next one peace